I have to admit, I was shocked to my core that AC Milan let Sandro Tonali leave the club really without too much of a fight and without too much of a transfer saga or anything like that. kind of came out of nowhere. He was a core part of the team. AC Milan won the Scudetto in the last couple of years for the first time in like a decade and he was a big part of that midfield. He bleeds red and black, you know, he was one of the Rosaneri himself on the pitch and it just really came out of nowhere. But very swiftly in his absence, AC Milan had been getting to work. But it felt like there was going to be a big speed bump and maybe the whole direction change AC Milan when Paolo Maldini and uh, the other guy is at Masaro were relieved of duties, parted companies with AC Milan, the club, and uh, Aukies, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so a lot of the team really bonded with Maldini. Maldini really was the club embodiment with the team. Before Maldini kind of came into the team, just for a little bit of background, it was the same manager, Stefano Pioli, and a lot of the same players, and they were kind of going nowhere for a couple of seasons, wasting a lot of money. And anyway, they, they did all work together extremely well. And I do find it quite surprising that it's ended. I'm not close enough to it to know all the minutia of all the politics and maybe somebody in the comments section will sort us out with some of those details. Now, they've made headlines, AC Milan, with the very swift capture of Ruben Loftus-Cheek, but there's about four or five other transfers almost done, practically done, just about over the line that really take AC Milan to another level for me next season. And for, you know, reigning champions, it was a really limp performance from them domestically last year. Obviously getting to a Champions League semi-final in the Derby, which they also didn't win, was uh, a bit of a highlight for that squad, that little generation that did win the league the year before. But that's the question mark of this team now. It's almost changing a little bit of guard already because Zlatan's agent, you know, he's retired. Giroud, big Kevin Nash, is not getting any younger, but he will be playing next year. And then there's a lot of players, like if we look at the squad, there's a lot of players that I wouldn't be confident to say they're in the best 11 in this AC Milan squad. For the right wing, there's about three or four options with guys like Messiah and De Ketelar and maybe one or two others you would throw in there. Last season, Brahim Diaz was in this spot and he was a real waste for me it really was and Sandro Tonali played here now I think the additions of uh, Yunus Musa and Ruben Loftus Cheek are brilliant but they do kind of offset this midfield because neither one of them are like openly defensive enough to allow Benacer a bit more creativity to move forward and neither of them again are like Ibrahim Diaz are openly so attacking that you have to have them in the final third I do think Yunus Musa has a very effective final third presence and I think he's at his best when transitioning in these kind of zones, these areas here. He's got a great engine. He's a real bully on the pitch. Like he doesn't take any crap from anyone. I'm a big fan of him. And I think he'd do really well in this AC Milan midfield. But it gets extra exciting for AC Milan and extra complicated because on top of Ruben Loftus-Cheek and Yunus Musa, it is highly rumoured and speculated that they are on the brink of signing to Gianni Reinders from AZ Alkmaar. Now, he's been an up-and-coming defensive midfielder wonder kid guy, responsible for pulling the strings, a real playmaker type. Maybe a little bit more of a Tanali replacement in progressive output and actually making sure the team ticks over well and again very good age and very good profile got some Dutch caps around him as well very very good profile which makes me think we may have a position change here at AC Milan because if you're going to put Reinders next on the list to be the next guy on the, the, the team sheet maybe we're going to have a little bit of a box situation perhaps uh, this is kind of Alan Leipzig target man up here maybe a Timo Werner and then an Nkunku who can just roam around here get the space where they want do that kind of thing little box in midfield with a back four. Could see that kind of thing working out for sure because uh, between Loftus-Cheek and Yunus Musa, they've got the energy in the legs to be able to pull something like that off. I don't think that's really in Pioli's wheelhouse, but we did see early on when he was at AC Milan before Maldini, he tried to play a bit more of, you know, this kind of shape here with Tonali, Benacer, Krunic, uh, Frank Kessie, these types of guys. And again, it would be this kind of mould, but we would have pace with a target man and it would be like a, a striker pairing that would work together and play that kind of way. But again, I don't think Yunus Musa or Loftus-Cheek really give you that attacking presence to really pull this kind of thing off. Now, between the four players we've got on here, we've got great depth for one another. There's actually a little bit of a mirror image here if we're thinking about building out in that way. It is hard to imagine that any of these guys are coming to AC Milan thinking they're going to take a back seat to anyone but. Because Christian Pulisic is very much linked to AC Milan as well to be joining. And he would join, obviously, former teammate Ruben Loftus-Cheek in a very attacking AC Milan side. And now, the right wing position has been a big problem for AC Milan. And I think Christian Pulisic is more than good enough uh, to fill that void and I think he would be probably at his best in this AC Milan team in Serie A. I think the Premier League is just not his game, not his bag and that's not the end of the world for players, that's not a bad 
mark against them. To be honest with you, when I see the guy on social media and whatever, I do think he's a wee bit of a no comment, you know, like he does, doesn't come across as like a, a great guy, let's say. But he's a great player. And and this team and this kind of front three as well, I uh, don't know if Giroud will hang about to be spearhead. There's still D- Divock Origi on the books as well. Anti Rebic, I think, is going to be out the door. But if Tijani Reinders is a defensive playmaker with Loftus Cheek and Musa alongside, that is. Wow, what a change of midfield, what a potential that's got to be really effective in Serie A. I don't know about Europe, it would be really hard to see because such a huge change, like it really needs cohesion and synergy to be at its best and there's no substitute for time on these things, there really isn't, you know, so this thing would only get better in season two and season three anyway. So you like to think with these plans when teams are being so aggressive in the transfer market to bring these types of players in, that they're going to stick to a plan and see it through. Now, Rafa Leal has signed an extension, okay? So he's going to be staying at AC Milan this season, but he was wanted by the good and the great of European football. And if he continues on this form with AC Milan, he will move at some point. They have already made an amazing move for his understudy, his Padawan, if you like. An Argentinian wonder kid, Luca Romero. Now, this guy, you might not have heard of him. He kind of broke onto the scene at like 14, 15 in Argentina, moved to Lazio age 15 or 16, and he was just getting into Mauricio Sarri's team that finished second in the league last year, coming off the bench and such, and making an impact. He's got a little bit of a highlight reel now. You can go and check it out. He is like 17, 18 now at this point, and he is, he is signing for AC Milan on a three transfer you know so I think he's going to be the substitute he's going to be the relief for Rafa Leal and we might we, we might see him break out this year you know he may become a bit more of a name of people knowing who he is and whatever and then from there really who knows where people can go but he seems to be a huge talent and this is a great addition from AC Milan to get in on a three transfer but again it does feel like there is a bit of a desired expressed void in this attacking creative midfield position now for me Brahim Diaz was not effective last year or even the year before it was like a two year loan and I know he had spells of form he's got some stats now don't don't listen to them, honestly. Like it was not good there. I don't maybe it does good at Real Madrid, who knows? But it was not for me in Serie A and not for me in this AC Milan team. It felt like playing with a man down. And another deal that was done ages ago that feels like it's been 99% done for like three months at this point is Daichi Kamada from Eintracht Frankfurt. Now, I think Kamada in Serie A would be lethal. I could even see him playing as a striker, by the way. I wouldn't put that past uh, uh you know Pioli, certainly or AC Milan, or even Serie uh, A football suiting him as a striker, because, see, in midfield, he is a little bit wasted, to be honest with you, he's a bit of a ghost, he just, you know, he presses, and he does all that kind of stuff as well, but he's very much, uh, you know, he just gets into spaces, he's got lots of assists and goals to his name, and he's not a wildly creative player, but he's very effective, if that makes sense, I don't know if I'd call him elegant, but he's definitely got some agility, you know, he's quite a hard player to describe, I'm a, a very big fan of him, and like I say, in Serie A, in any formation of this AC Milan team you care to think about, I think he could be on for a great season if that transfer also comes over the line, because with Magic Mike and goals, Tomori at the back, Tio Hernandez, if he sticks about, best left back in the world for me, Calabria, who's probably the last fan on the pitch in this AC Milan squad, Malik Tiao, that could be Pierre Kalulu, or it could be Bodhi Fallo, if, if he, Ture, if he doesn't transfer out, there's a few options in defence here, good depth really all over the place in different areas, so if these transfers go through, this is potentially the beginning of a nice generation of AC Milan in Serie A, you know, Scudetto win, not last season, but the season before, and then an exciting, young, dynamic squad like this that can go and kick on. Let me know your thoughts on this squad. What will AC Milan's best 11 look like with all these players involved? You know, I can't figure it out, can you? <laughs> Let me know in the comments section. Stay out of trouble, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.